Welcome to our October Teze service. Uh, most of you joined us for dinner um, from f for the foreseeable future. This is an experiment. We're going to gather for uh, just a light spaghetti supper in room one at 5.30 and then, and then come in here to convene for our Teze service. For those of you who have not been around <clears throat> this form of, of worship before, uh, just a, a few words about, about the, the form and the origin. Um, at Teze is, is actually, it's, a, it's an ecumenical monastic community that's near Lyon in France. And um, because the brothers are from all over the world, they developed a style of worship that really isn't so dependent on, on understanding language. And so the, you'll see, if you, if you got a book, you'll see that most of the chants are in multiple languages. And this is because they were accommodating uh, ways to pray in community and to pray through song together. So um, it's, it's really a Pentecost moment if you go to Teze. The first time I was there, there were 84 languages represented, all singing in their own native language at the simultaneously. It's absolutely a gorgeous, gorgeous experience. Here we mostly sing in Latin and English, but occasionally we'll have one of our singers who dares to sing in French or in Spanish, or um, there's one that we're doing tonight that, that's in German, uh, Bleibet Herr. Uh, so you, you are welcome to give, give the languages a try, and, um, or just sing in English or Latin, or la la la. It's, uh, it's kind of, um, the, the point is, exactly what we're doing tonight. As you can see, the theme of, of, our, of our service tonight is praying in community. And we all know that there are varieties of ways to do that. We can pray together in silence, which we will do. We can pray together in song. Um, we can pray together without, without words, or, and we can, we can pray with our bodies. And you are welcome at any time to get up. If you're more comfortable standing as, as you sing or as you pray, you're welcome to do that. We have the kneeler set up at the communion table any time during the service. There, there's a little section called prayers at the altar where, you know, if you really want to want to, to wait until then you're welcome to but anytime during the service you're welcome to go and kneel and pray and stay as long as you want light a candle there there are candles there that are unlit for for that purpose um, so we pray together in silence in song in prayer the chants are easy to learn the point is to learn them so that you can sing them by memory and they can pray themselves in our spirits so um, I, I know that a lot of you know the chants already, and the ones we're doing tonight are pretty familiar to, to those of you who come consistently to, to Teze. So as we prepare our, our minds and our hearts, as we take deep breaths and kind of let go of the, the tensions of the day, either empty our minds or focus our minds on, and our hearts on on. What is, what is weighing on us or, or where our attention is going. Let's spend just a, a minute or two in silence and then we'll begin.
back and forth movement between us and God in the whole of our lives, between God's continual grace and our continual response. It is also a movement between our receptivity and friendly silence in God's presence and our continual reflection 
on the meaning of what we learn about God, ourselves, and others as we grow in love. Prayer also connects us with the larger community around the world and to the body of Christ through the ages, the cloud of witnesses that continually surrounds us. Prayer connects us with ourselves. It is the link between our new selves that are being transformed into God's loving image and our old selves with which we must come to terms if we are to be transformed. In prayer, we discover who we are and move toward who we are to become.
For years, I looked ahead, <clears throat> searching for holy places down the road, trying to reach them as soon as possible. Now I believe instead that this ground is sacred, and wherever I stand at this moment is holy. We can become so focused on our accomplishments that we will not even see the holy, sacred, healing grace that is present all around us as we travel. If we do not stop and look, our woundedness and alienation and fatigue will grow, and we will never be able to hear our own voices. We need to rest and allow our spirits to be healed and made whole along the way, not so that we can do better or travel farther, but so we will make the journey in our own good time. And sometimes we ought to linger, perhaps for a long time, until the beauty of that place has shaped us from the inside. Yeah.
Each community has a different rhythm created by the movements of its comings and goings, work and play, meetings and partings. The rhythms of the community may change over time depending on how it discerns its identity in the midst of a changing world. We have our own individual rhythms within the community. Some thrive on contact, while others prefer, prefer a more solitary life. Some devote their lives to the daily maintenance of the community, while others breathe life into it through art, music, and poetry. We may find ourselves in a radically altered relationship to the community as we move to its edges or outside, or outside it entirely for brief or lengthy periods of time. We know that the rhythms of community can be both life-giving and stifling, liberating and oppressive. In these days, we listen to and follow the spirit's own rhythms as it moves with us. We listen to stories of others in other communities. We gather at their table to listen, to learn, to commune. May we find deeper understanding of what it means to be a community of healing, hope, and transformation. Ooh. 
Now it is evening. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. And we go in the peace of this place, in the quiet care of one another. May the Spirit keep us, hold us as we sleep. May we truly rest in love. Amen.